tunes. Um, we've had Laurie Cardill from Dare the Dead. We've had Kelly Maroney. We've had a whole bunch of people. Um, and it's just like, it, 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 it's just like when you were a teenager or younger. And they're they're happy, happy, so happy to interact with the fans because we have such a welcoming audience. They, they can feel the warmth coming from the screen that people are just real happy to have this opportunity to talk to them, especially before a watch party of one of their favorite films. It's, it's really- Yeah, it's, it's dominating my Sunday night. And, um, you know, it's, uh, it, it's the best executed watch party uh, consistently that I've ever seen. I have to add one other element about these movies, which is, which is very unique. Uh, and it's something that I really enjoy about this film is not only are these icons of the era talking about movies that they worked on uh, and, and sharing insights and unheard stories and stories that you've heard before to pull maybe from a different point of view and context. Uh, but what is cool about it is that they talk about stuff that they love. They're talking about the genre, they're talking about the era, and they're talking about some of their favorite films and why. Why were they influences? Why did they just love them? What, why, what scared them? Um, and you don't quite get that. And you have this sort of community collective of these people talking about films together. And it's almost as if you went to the pub the pub closed, but you got that corner table in the back and you get to sit with the world's greatest horror icons until four in the morning talking about 80s horror and what we all love about it. And that's super special. And that's really, I think, what sets this apart. I think that's the nice thing about the horror community as well. Like you forget these guys are such fans themselves and that if you do get them in a room and you just chat to them about horror, like they're the same as you, you know, there's no, that's why the watch parties have worked so well on Discord it's kind of these these people are super fans too and they're just happy to be chatting to their community their eyes their eyes get wide when you ask them you know they they've been this is their career they it's not the first time they've been asked questions about uh you know what they what they've done influentially in that decade but when you when you can get time to sit down with these people like uh robin had mentioned i mean i sat down with robert england for three hours at his home. And that was such a treat because you get to go down rabbit holes and avenues and tangents that, that yield incredible results and wonderful stories and anecdotes. And you can go beyond just the decade. And it's really a point of view. You know, why, why is he so married to this genre uh, when he could have chosen to go other avenues as well? And, and that perspective and point of view is very cool especially when they, you know, he's talking about sitting in a movie theater, eating his popcorn and his, his Chico bonbons, getting excited to see something even at the drive-in. I mean, that's just fun stuff to listen to. So cool. So can you, so I think, uh, Rob, Robin, you mentioned that there's, is there 12 special editions this time? Based on uh, the new I've, run out of, I've, I've run out of, uh, you tell me, I don't know how many special editions we've got. The, <laughs> the we do, collector editions are quite a new development. We did, um, three last year, they were very successful. Um, we did Elvira, uh, the YouTube channel Dead Meat, and the lead single Slipknot, Corey Taylor. Um, and this year, I think we've done about 10 extra ones. So we're doing Chris Jericho, the wrestler, who is an insane 80s horror uh, nut, really. And, and I listened to his interview, and this Chris Jericho's knowledge of 80s horror is insane. Corey Taylor from Slipknot, is like another student of the game like it's it's actually incredibly impressive their knowledge of the movies and the way they deliver um their affection for them in, in such a charismatic and interesting way um we've got two of our our uh, big partners um cinemassacre um the angry video game nerd who who was a big influence on me lovely guy james rob who's in the first one and um Cecil from the YouTube channel Good Bad Flicks. Um, we've got Kane Hodder, uh, Linnea Quigley, and there's a whole bunch of ones. But the, the, the thing with collector editions is they're really designed to appeal to that person's very specific niche audience. So it's not something we really talk about, but because the fans wanted them, because it made sense for us to deliver slightly altered versions and, 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 and kind of through the lens of that influencer, our format allows us to do that. Um, but the if you look at the package that we're offering the artwork that hit, that comes within search of darkness part two is the best we've ever done 
Um, it comes with three posters. David, behind David, there is our kind of lead poster by the artist Dave Merrill. We have another, uh, we have our one with, with kind of two columns. Um, and oh, we have a Clayton, yeah. Other piece. Yeah, it's just like, it's just really beautiful. It's just kind of so nostalgic, so evocative. Um, it comes with an enamel pin. Um, so you're getting a whole bunch of value. And what we found with our, our edition, and because we self-distribute, because we don't allow any real intermediaries to get involved between us and our audience, th these things go for a premium. So, you know, I think the collector's editions last year, they retailed, including shipping worldwide, for about $59.99. And they were popping up on eBay for $250, $300. And they still go for that. Wow. And they were always getting asked by people, where can I get a copy of a Blu-ray? You can't, you just can't get them. So there's a real intrinsic value to... Um, what we're doing and, and you know everything we do is kind of against the industry norm no one makes four and a half hour documentaries are you insane that's what I get but I realize that's what makes us special you know because we don't have to do anything that we don't want to do we're making this for ourselves we want to you know we don't want to we don't want to have like the general audience buy into us this is for super horror fans of 80s horror this is a people that where it means something to them if that's you, then, then you're part of our tribe and we want to create an unforgettable experience for you and, and have it not just on your own at home or with your friends at home. We want to take it online. We want you to meet people that dig the same stuff you do. And that's where the whole community thing comes in at a time when the world really needs it, actually. You know, yeah. everyone's isolated. And, and, you know, 80s horror is the one of the things that brings people together. I went to a gig last year when, when you could go to gigs. I remember a guy was in the, in the audience and he had the thing on his t-shirt, like the poster of the thing. And I knew that me and him would be bros. Like it just, it was just an unsaid thing, right? That's what I want to sort of use. That's what I want to leverage to bring people together because, you know, that's what this is all about really, ultimately. You know, I think hey, your, your connection and certainly our connection to 80s horror is a way to sort of relive those childhood memories of discovering this for the first time. And that's what, you know, that's the feedback we had from our audience. It was like, that's how you make me feel. And that's what these films are designed to do. They're designed to make you feel like you're reconnecting with your past, but also your adult brain has a lot to think about as well. And that's why they work. Yeah, I think uh, a lot of people have mentioned, because obviously you've had that round of, it, it went out slightly to, to a more, you know, a bigger audience with Shudder kind of picking it up. And then you've had this whole kind of round two of people going, this is the most amazing thing. Like I didn't blink for four and a half hours. It was just reminding me of all these amazing things that happened in my childhood. And that classic movie that was such like a big part of my, my whole kind of history of my, uh, you know, my teens and stuff like that. All these movies are, are, are very special to all of us for different reasons. And uh, a very important conceit of this film is not to judge what is better and what is worse. You know, if something was better at the box office, more cr critically acclaimed, um, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, we look at these on an even playing field. And, you know, a chopping mall or My Bloody Valentine or Brian Yosemite Society is, is up there with The Fly and, and The Shining and uh, whatever, whatever's considered the, the, the cream of the crop, we all look at these from a lens of, it's important to all of us for different reasons, whether we, we saw it, you know, in, 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 in the, the living room when the parents weren't around because we were latchkey kids and we got to watch something that we weren't quite ready or supposed to be watching. And uh, we had that shared experience. Um, they, these all matter to us, whether they were an escape from something that was a little challenging in our lives and whether or not people like this movie or not, um, no one needs to defend these movies. These movies are important to us for all different reasons and that's what we're celebrating. I think it's also as well for that sort of newer generation that are kind of discovering stuff for the first time. It's a really solid list of, this is where you get started, you know. There'll be, and there'll be plenty of stuff that people from that era won't have seen as well, might have heard of at the time and maybe missed it and are picking up these absolute gems of films now that are just on their watch list. It's, it's real fun to see. It's basically a, a movie that is a curation list by the greatest icons of 80s horror for the fans. 
And if you're brand new to this, uh, or if you, you, you never thought about a movie a certain way until you saw this film, and now you're interested in revisiting it, uh, we're getting all sorts of people sharing those experiences. They're like, well, I never, I never really gave killer clowns from outer space a, a second blink because I just wasn't interested. But now that Joe Dante is one of his favorite films, now I'm interested.